Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. This is the 14th Sunday after Holy Trinity. The order of service is divine service setting four, and this week I won't forget the offering. Uh, I put a big note at the end of the prayers to, to do that, so, uh, because it threw me off, too. I was on the wrong side of the altar for the second half of the service. It uh, was not great. <laughs> so, uh, but we did get the gifts, so thanks be to God that he, uh, he is gracious and merciful to us. We begin with our opening hymn. 873, uh, Christ whose glory fills the sky with the bells beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our condi sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Behold our shield, O God, look on the face of your anointed. 
for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven proclaim that Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father. Your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God. Son, we pray, O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your church with your perpetual mercy. And because of our frailty, we cannot but fall. Keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful. And lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament for the 14th Sunday after Trinity is written in Proverbs the fourth chapter. Hear, my son, and accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the path of uprightness. When you walk, 
your steps will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of the evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ears, your ear to my sayings. Let them, be, let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance. For from it, flows the springs of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. The epistle is written in St. Paul's letter to the church in Galatia, the fifth chapter. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. For if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not in inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When Jesus saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God 
with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return to, to give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Do not give us what we deserve. This is the fervent prayer of the ten lepers, which they scream in desperation at Jesus as he walked by them. Their lives were at their end, if one could call what they had life. They did have each other, but what was that? They had to be around each other. Those whom they wanted to be with, those whom they loved and who loved them, could not be near. There was no hugs and kisses, no birthday parties, no walking one's daughter down the aisle at her wedding. One could not hold the hand of their dying spouse or mourn for a dead parent with the family. 
It was a cold, lonely, depressing life. And it was all deserved. Yes, it was deserved. Not that they necessarily did anything particular to get leprosy. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But nevertheless, they deserved it. Just as we all would deserve it if we were to fall, it would, were to fall on us. They were sinners, just as we are. Now, this is a harsh preaching of the law. I know. It is exactly, though, what St. Paul does in today's epistle. Last week, he also proclaimed and remind us, reminds us that the Scripture imprisoned everything under sin so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. All things are imprisoned under sin. The flesh is under the condemnation of the law precisely because it is sinful. Even if one never gets leprosy, everyone dies, which is the singular proof needed to show that we are indeed sinners. Remember that the wages of sin is death. Today, Paul reveals to us that we are at war with God, whether we intend to be or not. We are in the flesh, and the flesh is locked in battle against the Spirit. The Spirit is fighting us all. It is one of the gifts, gifts given to us in our baptism. Yes, God loves us so much that He fights for us, that the flesh doesn't have the final say in the sleep of death. For if the spirit is not on the offensive, sticking it to the flesh, we will be consumed forever by the grave. Without the intervention of the spirit, our flesh decays, rots on the bone. Our flesh, with its sinful desires, is a flesh that is spiritually leprous. The leprosy that infects the body is an infection that attacks the skin and the peripheral nerves of the body deadening them to any and all sensation, which then leads to accidental wounds, infection, and in extreme cases, loss of limb. Like the disease of the flesh, the works of the, uh, the, works of the flesh, which feed our fleshly desires, is the disease that numbs all our consciences and leaves us great gaping wounds that fester and stink. They drive us from our loved ones. They lead us farther and farther from God and closer to eternal death. The works of the flesh drive us into ourselves, into the deep darkness of our fallen hearts. They fuel our selfish, self-centered, self-serving desires. When left unchecked, untreated, they even kill us. They serve as the weapons we attempt to use, oddly enough, on God and others, but in the end, we end up falling on them ourselves. They become our undoing. Thanks be to God, our disease is not left untreated. We are engaged in a battle with the Holy Spirit, and He is able to be eternally victorious. For the Spirit, with the truth of God's law, uncovers all we wish to keep in the dark. He scrubs our wounds clean with purest rubbing alcohol, and it hurts. The list is quite extensive. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, Rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Paul leaves no rock left unturned. Paul uncovers them because, as he says, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The nasty reality is that we all do these things. We all have the leprosy that keeps us from the kingdom of God. 
by our many sins, we stand afar off and have nothing but to scream in terrified desperation, Jesus, have mercy on me. Do not give us what we deserve. Indeed, Jesus does have mercy. He reaches out to those lepers with his word. Go and show yourself to the priest. Now, this is not the law as you might suppose. With their leprosy, the only point of going to the priest was to show them that their leprosy was gone. It was like Naaman being told by Elisha to go to the Jordan River and dip seven times to be healed of his leprosy. It was by believing the word, a word that was encouraged and preached to them once again, even by his own servants. He believed the word and dipped seven times, and he was healed. The word did what it said it would do. Faith receives what the word says and does. So as the lepers went to the priests, they were indeed healed. They went because they believed Jesus would heal them. Why would he send them to the priests if he wasn't going to? And Jesus did. He did that, exactly, that exact thing. He healed them. He gave them their lives back. Lives they were, they were to show to the priests and then be restored to full fellowship with man and God. Jesus did not give them what they deserved. He gave them what they didn't deserve. His grace was shown and showered on them and they were cleansed. Jesus speaking was no simple word. His speaking was his intimate touch. For his word is synonymous with who he is. Remember, he is the word made flesh who dwelt among us. It was as if he touched them with his holy hand. He healed them with his word. He healed them with his word, but in touching them, he in turn became an intentional casualty of the war, of the war between flesh and the spirit. You see, he becomes unclean. He becomes the leper himself. He makes the great exchange. He is everything that we are not. We are the flesh, but he is of the Spirit, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. His flesh is without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. In fact, he is the fruit of the Spirit in every way, in the flesh. And because he is the fruit of the Spirit, there is no law that is against him. He is love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, and gentleness in the flesh. He simply does what is good, right, and salutary all the time, and he does it for you and for me. Like those lepers, Jesus touches you every day with his word. The Spirit wields his mighty sword and slays your flesh. He throws you down and drowns you in holy water. He reminds you that you are daily crucified with the one who was crucified for you. The Spirit speaks to you that you must receive your healing in the only one who is the fruit of the Spirit, who has never tasted the works of the flesh for himself, but has willingly borne the consequences of your imbibing. In Jesus, the one into whom you are baptized, you are bound to his bloody forgiveness. Forgiveness worked out in the life and death of Jesus. You are made clean and, def uh, and undefiled by washing of new birth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Your very flesh and all its works are washed onto Jesus and then crucified on his cross for you.
what joy, what peace, what love. It is by the love of God through Jesus Christ that we all indeed receive his mercy and his grace. And like the one Samaritan who returned to give thanks to Jesus, we do the same. We thank and praise, serve and obey him because everything he does, everything he gives is for our good, including the very things that cause us to cry out to him for mercy. And so we give thanks this day to Jesus that he is here in this place as he is every Lord's Day. He enters the battlefield that is our flesh. He enters our ears and he enters our hearts with his word. He touches our flesh with his forgiveness, life, and salvation given in his very body and blood in the supper. He strengthens us with his precious body and blood for the battle of this temporal life so that we will be with him by his hand in his kingdom forever. For we are now made inheritors of the kingdom of God because he has done it all for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you have had mercy upon us by sending your only begotten Son to atone for our sins on the cross. Grant that we may receive your forgiveness, life, and salvation with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, preserve your church and her ministers. Give to all pastors courage to embrace gladly the crosses of their office that following their example, all Christians may also bear the reproach of the world, the attacks of Satan and the temptations of the flesh in the confidence of Christ's redemption. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, by your gracious provision, you created your church to be your family where, nurtured by your word and sacraments, all of us may find a home filled with sisters and brothers to care for us, love us, and increase our joy. Make us a refuge for the weary, a family for the lonely, a safe place for those who are afraid, and a help to one another in all our burdens. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, turn the eyes of our president, Joseph, and our governor, Anthony, and all who make, who execute and judge our laws to you that they may receive wisdom and strength to faithfully carry out their duties. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, you open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The lepers came to your son for mercy. Send your merciful hand upon the sick and needy, including Cheryl Krieger, Ellison Butch Riemert, Agnes Riemert, Jean Clanky, and those whom we now name in our hearts, that their sicknesses would be turned to health and their troubles to joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Good Lord, your Son instituted the salutary gift of the Lord's Supper. Send your blessing upon all who receive the body and blood of Jesus for their forgiveness. Grant thanks, thankful hearts that praise your name to all who receive the sacrament this day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you called us to be your own possession and to be in the image of your only begotten Son. Grant that our lives may give evidence of your Spirit's work through love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty God, you have done great things for us. Most of all, delivering us from death to life through Jesus Christ. Mercifully hear our prayers 
and answer them according to your will for the sake of your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our, the, our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give thanks for your redemption, for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ, Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and a life to come. Be fired in God's peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
Christ shed for you, the blood of 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 Christ shed for you. Now the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you with the one true faith, but this life and the life to come. Be guarded in God's peace, your sins are forgiven. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world.
Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but to always hear, to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. seated. The Lord's blessings to you again this morning. A couple announcements to bring to your attention. Um, last minute this morning, I forgot that uh, at the deacons meeting this last week, we decided we are scheduling a special voters meeting. Notice the first word, brief. <laughs> so the idea is, so this is to get approval from the congregation uh, to begin the uh, feasibility study, or as, it's, as they say, the readiness study of uh, going to the next step on seeing if the school is a feasible thing. Uh, the congregations, three congregations at this point that are on board with this are St. John's Fredonia and Pilgrim and West Bend and then ourselves. Uh, and we are all three going to work together. We, we have a, um, we're going to gather together a uh, steering committee that will collect all the information. Once we get into the application process, a facilitator from the Synod uh, likely a good friend and classmate of mine from the seminary 
uh, who is running a classical Lutheran school down in Texas, will be our facilitator, and he'll come through and interview uh, stakeholders uh, of all three congregations and the community at large. If you even if you don't have children in the in the school, if you are interested in supporting the school or having a school, come give your input. There's plenty of questions that he has. Uh, I participated in the uh, the process for the classical Lutheran high school that's being started in West Alice, uh, Trinity Lutheran uh, School there, and uh, it was a great process. And uh, now next. In two, when are, is it this coming fall? A year from today, or this fall, uh, they're starting the Classical Lutheran High School uh, in West Dallas. So, um, not to say it's going to happen tomorrow, uh, but we're, we're starting the process. We're going to see if it's even something that can be done. Um, I think it can be, uh, and not necessarily a K through 8 right away, uh, but we're going to build this in a very deliberate and intentional way uh, as we go forward. Yes, Bronwyn. Mm -hmm. Emma Lyons is only three. Mm -hmm. um, what are the chances um, of, I don't know if the congregation is aware of the um, university on the, the west coast, is it in? Oh, yeah, it, in, in Wyoming? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's. What are uh, the chances of us uh, being, if we have really little ones, getting them? Yeah, because I, I know it's going to be packed or something. Yeah, the, here yeah that. that that college is starting in 2025, I think, or 2024. So I, I have to look that up. But that, that's a long ways down the road. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to be fixating on, uh, on getting a school started here yeah. uh, and then going forward with that. Uh, there, we're we're going to see how, how that looks. It, it may very well be that it, we have the space to even go to 12. Uh, K through 12. I mean, it doesn't have, we got to get this, it doesn't have to be 20 kids in each class. It could be five, six. Yeah. Um, and we have the resources. Uh, there are a lot of resources available uh, for, for having small schools. Uh, there is some great benefits to having multiple grades in one classroom, uh, oddly enough. Um, and they, it, that has been proven throughout history. So, uh, but th this meeting for the 2nd of October, uh, right after divine service, we'll have this just to get your assent uh, to go ahead with the process. Uh, there is a $500 cover, but uh, I'm assured that the district will cover that application fee, uh, and we will then move forward with the three congregations. It's not going to be just a St. John thing. Um, it's going to be a, a circuit and a district uh, collaboration. There will also be Bible study and Sunday school still that Sunday, so the second we will still have that. Also at that meeting, uh, this is just a, a passing formality. Uh, it, we have our circuit forum uh, to elect delegates to the Synod Convention, which is next summer here actually in, uh, in Milwaukee. Uh, we need a, a, a delegate from the congregation, a representative of the congregation to vote on behalf of the congregation. And so uh, Tim has uh, uh, allowed his name to stand. If there are any other names, we can actually have a, a, an actual election or we can just uh, uh, affirm him. Uh, it's a 15-minute meeting, so uh, in, Port, er, in uh, West Bend at Pilgrim uh, to elect uh, representatives for the convention. But uh, we should do that uh, before we go. So, any other? Oh, we uh, any other announcements? Yes, Tim, you have one. Uh, as you know, the pigs are on the way. <laughs> They're still being fattened up a bit, but they'll be here November. I'm looking for someone to help with the preparation of the food the week before. As we know, Pastor Cleavy's done that in the past. I'm looking for a kitchen, head kitchen person to set up those days to do the food preparation for that week. I have all the recipes, so we don't have to worry about that. I just need someone to head it up and to watch over that We are. Because there's people that are asking about it. Yep. 
Yes, they are. It is happening. I don't know what the program is exactly yet, but I'm getting there. We don't have fat calves, we have fat pigs. Fat pigs. So we are looking, I, I, was, I was toying with the idea of calling it the kitchen czar, but then I was thinking last night we could call it the kitchen cleavy, uh, or, or the kitchen cleaver. The kitchen, and you can maybe get a, a little cleaver. To, and, and so we can, we can make this an annual thing, who's going to be the, the kitchen cleaver or the cleavy. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. It might be something. Uh, enticing. So we need somebody to help uh, facilitate and, and to organize the, 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 the schedule and the uh, handing out of responsibilities uh, for that weekend. Uh, we are having that. Uh, I'm toying with the idea of doing something you did a couple of years ago on Lutheran education. Uh, which uh, I'm still working on and, and maybe tweaking and editing that for, for use uh, this coming year. Uh, reminder, we have Bible study in Sunday school uh, this morning. Uh, we continue with the fall into sin. And then uh, one, Monday nights at 6.30, we have Old Testament catechesis. We're going, starting from Genesis and going through the, uh, particularly the first five books of Moses, as well as uh, some Judges and some Job and uh, we open this, this whole class is for the, the, we have two youth catechumens, but it is for all people, uh, all members of the congregation. We had two extra that came up along with the parents, and that was a great time on Monday night. We close with Compline, so we look forward to having you there. Thursday morning, Bible study also uh, at 9 o'clock uh, with uh, uh, usually donuts or some sort of baked good and coffee, and we are going through the book of Judges. Are there any other announcements? Seeing none, may God keep you safe in the palm of his hands until we meet again. God bless. Amen. Amen.